Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. We just had a release of SFML. Now, this is a long time in the coming. When I say a long time in the coming, I mean it's 12 years since SFML 2. So now SFML 3 is here. If you've never heard of it before, SFML stands for Simple and Fast Multimedia Layer, I believe. I screw up acronyms all the time. And again, they just dropped uh, over the weekend SFML uh, 3.0. Like I said earlier on, this has been 12 years in the making. If you're wondering what exactly SFML is, it's a C++ library with with language bindings for a number of different languages for creating 2D games. Now, uh, it is pretty much a comparable to SDL or Allegro, those kind of libraries. It does everything you need, like input handling, uh, your game data structures, graphics, of course, sound, and so on. So we've got three years since SML3 was started. There are 1,100 commits to it, 41 new contributors, whole lot of time invested in terms of the new features. You're going to notice one thing repeatedly when I talk about the new features features, and it is this first thing. Uh, they moved up to support C++17. Now, this isn't just a matter of they changed it so that they compiled with C++17, because they probably did all along. They actually restructured just about everything to work with C++17's data structures as opposed to their homegrown stuff. And of course, this is going to have some impact on your code if you are using SFML2 right now for a project. In fact, probably enough breaking changes that if you're currently doing a project, you probably want to wait until you're done and switch over. Uh, they also updated the test suite, so it's got 57% code coverage. OpenAL, the um, audio library from the Kronos group, was replaced with Min Audio, Mini Audio, sorry, uh, new and improved event handling API, scissor and stencil testings, and more. So uh, SFML is a framework that I have been interested in for a very long time. I actually did a uh, a tutorial series on it back in 2015, so almost a decade ago, and that was using SFML2. So you get an idea, again, how long in the works SFML3 has been. Now this tutorial series with these changes is probably pretty much pointless. Uh, here we are now in the full change logs for SFML3, you get an idea of what happened here. Uh, so now, by the way, so they moved to C++17, but not only did they move to it, they actually require it. So if you are not using C++17 at this point in time, you cannot use SFML3. Now at the same time, uh, C++17 uh, support is in like Visual Studio 2017 or maybe 2019. It, basically, if your compiler or tools aren't four or five years out of date, uh, you can use C++17. So they completely modernized all the internals to make this actually work. They also upgraded CMake, uh, updated unit tests, uh, continuous improvement jobs in there, a uh, number of things on the build sides were approved, OpenAL was removed, uh, and then a number of other changes here. Several bug fixes, some new features in place, and some of these things are definitely, um, again, Again, due to that 17 migration. Things like SF non-copyable class was replaced by equals delete operators. They replaced all the multi-threading primitives with standard C++ ones. Added SF angle, uh, added extension methods for SF vector 2. Uh, the SF clock is possible now, which is kind of important. Uh, added polar coordinates to vector 2. Uh, added extension methods, so on and so forth. So a number of improvements here, improvements to their windowing system to their graphic system, again, as they mentioned earlier on, now support for stencil testing in there as well, uh, improvements to the audio, and again, the original audio was open AL, now it is using mini audio, uh, and then just general improvements in here as well. Now, as I mentioned, and as you can probably guess from what's going on here, this is going to break a ton of code. So there is actually a migration guide that walks you through it. So again, they went from a C++ 3 to a C++ 17 there, and that does require an upgraded compiler, but as you can see, Visual Studio 2019, GCC 9, Clang 9, or Apple Clang 12. So basically any modern-ish C++ environment, you are good to go. Uh, it uses CMake conventions for libraries. This is actually a migration from the way it used to be, so you don't have these collisions with what you are building. So now they're using this namespace style approach instead of SFML underscore syst or hyphen system, hyphen window, hyphen graphics, and so on. Um, and then on top of that, uh, they've made a lot of changes here. Uh, for example, vector, it used to use a pair of scalars. Uh, now it uses um, a vector two as a parameter there. Fixed with integers. Uh, so they had all their own integer types built in. And this is one of those things when C++ in the early days, uh, like a uint wasn't a uint necessarily. Like it could be a different size on different platforms. Uh, now C++ has standardized it to these classes. So they got rid of all of these. Uh, so it replaced across the board, they're now using the CSTD or um, C standard integer classes. Uh, then we've got 
event. Event got a lot of changes, by the way. So the event system is working on a new method here. Uh, this is basically the heart of your code, so it is rather important. Uh, so you now have this git if. Uh, works by providing a template parameter, which must be an event subtype. So you're checking for a certain event type, and if it exists, it will return that event. So if you're looking for a mouse click or a key press or something to that effect, like you can see right here. So this will get a key pressed if there is a key pressed event. So it's going to really change the way that the event loop works. Uh, also, processing event is available via the new SF window based handle events function. Performs event visitation, what it means is that you can use provided callbacks, which take different event subtypes as arguments. So it's going to make dealing with a multitude of different events a lot easier here. Um, so, but you get an idea of from the migration guide. Again, they changed out the way that they work with rect. Um, so it used to use fixed scalars, now it's not. Uh, and then we've got angle was added, a number of uh, functions were renamed. You can see from to from to. Um, I think it's just for consistency here or clarification, I guess. Uh, but you're gonna find right now, if your existing code in SFML2, you wanna move it over to SFML3, it's probably going to be a bit of a headache, just, just so you know. But there is a migration guide, walks you through all the various different things that changed. By the way, if you go to the GitHub repository and you go into examples, uh, you will find event handling has been updated. So if you want to see the new way that event handling works, there is an updated version of it here, kind of showcasing uh, things like, uh, I think this is, yeah. So here you got the new git if method there for handling uh, various different uh, mouse and touch events all being shown here. So it also gives you an idea of what an SFML application looks like. Uh, by the way, if you are interested, there are language bindings for a number of different languages as well. If you are interested in learning more about SFML, it is available at sfml-dev.org. Um, again, so it does stand for Simple and Fast Multimedia Library. It is basically a 2D game framework with all like the input handling, audio handling, data structures, and all that kind of stuff that you might be interested in. Now, I think one of the areas where like why SFML didn't take off as much as SDL did would probably be the platform limitations. And even right now, iOS does have some limitations in place and that took forever for them to add. Um, but we'll, we'll see in a second some of the games that are made with uh, SFML. Also, by the way, there are language bindings available for a number of different languages. So even if you despise C++, you will find bindings. Now, the one quit you're going to find SFML 3 was just released. So uh, I don't know if you're going to have any 3.0 bindings available immediately, or you're gonna have to probably wait a little bit on that. Uh, so just one of those things to be aware if I head on up here. Yeah, we're not showing any bindings for the 3.0 version as of yet. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, games created with SFML. Now this is from SteamDB and this isn't always accurate. For example, I don't think Crypt of the Necrodancer was actually made using SFML. I think the tooling was. So it ships with SFML DLLs, but wasn't necessarily made using it. Uh, but the tooling was, so it is still an endorsement there. I believe it was made with Monkey uh, programming language here. Uh, and then you can see some of the other examples of games that were created using SFML. So it is definitely, um, battle tested. So this is rated by popularity, definitely in the indie space. I would say um, SDL has definitely a bigger profile in this space, but then again, SDL is used by a Valve. So uh, that does tend to expose it a little bit more, uh, but you can see here some games you've most likely heard of, like, such as Luth uh and so on. I probably mangled the pronunciation of that. Uh, if you're interested, it is an open source project. It is available under the Zlib license. And again, SFML 3 is now available. And again, if you like what you see, drop them a star. They always seem to appreciate that. And uh, yeah, SFML 3, now C++17. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.